You may have heard that you should treat trading as a business. The problem with this saying is that most people never own a business, and statistically, most businesses fail within the first five years. So how can new traders treat trading like something they've never done? Most people begin trading because they don't want to work that typical 9-to-5 job, and treating trading like a business sounds like a lot of work to most people. As a new trader, the biggest downfall is not having the right expectations. It takes years to learn how to trade without a proper mentor. It takes years to learn how to control your emotions, create a working trading strategy, and on average it can take between 3-5 to five years just to create a working trading system. This doesn't include the time it takes to follow that system without making any trading errors. Newer traders shouldn't already be thinking about trading as a business. Newer traders should be thinking that and trading trading more like going to college. You don't expect to go to college and start making money right away in your field of study now, do you? I think that many people treat trading more like on-the-job training. Things that you can earn while you learn. The problem with this mentality is you have already switched your way of thinking from being a student and taking the time to learn and taking things slowly. Instead, you are focusing more on the profits. Uh, you are no longer in the student mindset. Since most traders are starting with very small accounts, most people that I talk to have around a $5,000 account size. It's really unrealistic to think that you can grow your account to a size where you can quit your job in only a few years, let alone make millions of dollars quickly. I do think that all new traders should start off with a small account and use a very small size, less than $500 per trade. Learning how to trade is no different than going to college. In college, you learn the skills necessary to succeed in your specialized field. If you're not focused on how much money you will be making, you're purely focused on the process the school is teaching. In college, your progress is tracked by your grades. New traders oftentimes think that your grade is your P&L, when in fact your stock tracker and your trading workbook truly track what your grades are in the market. All your P&L is is reflecting how well you understand what you're learning and how well you are able to execute what you have learned um, think about the PL more like passing a test. You can't improve without knowing where to improve. Like the grade you get in college tells you what you need to improve. Uh, an example, if you get a D in math, this means that you need to study more in math. Your data and trading workbook tells you which patterns you should be focusing on or avoiding and what mental states of mind you need to be aware of. Over time, as you start to gather more data about the markets and yourself, you start to build a strong foundation to start to grow your trading business. The foundation is made up of patterns, setups, and rules that you'll follow without error, also known as a trading plan. You'll begin the slow transition from a student into a trading business. What makes a profitable business is a set of core business practices or business plan. This trading business plan is separate from your trade plan, but it can also include some of the elements of your trade plan. Trading is a for-profit business, and as such, all traders are in it for the same thing. They want to make money. A trading business plan is a set of rules or practices that you follow along with your trading plan. Your trading business plan is an outline of the steps you're going to take to achieve your goals. A trading system or trading strategy is a set of rules and conditions that will give you a signal to enter or exit a trade. A signal or edge is a statistically repeatable pattern. This pattern could be a technical chart pattern or an indicator or a combination of both. The importance of data collection and backtesting is you'll want to have more than just a guess on your side. You want to have the odds in your favor as much as you possibly can. By having a trading system, you'll know what edges work based on real data and what edges do not. You'll be able to avoid guesswork and surprises, and you'll also know what your exit goals should be for both taking profits and cutting losses. You should always predefine your risk and profit objectives before entering into any trade. What is your exit strategy? Is it backed by data? Every good business has money management plan and so should your trading business. How much money are you willing to bet on this particular trade? I want you to think about this for a moment. You just went to the bank and withdrew from your personal account a pile of cash. That pile of cash is sitting there on your trading desk. It also represents your total trading account. Now imagine every time you want to place a trade, you'd have to feed 
that real money into your computer for that particular trade? How much are you willing to feed into the computer and how much are you willing to risk? Large part of money management is your total account size versus the cost of the trade. If you have a total trading equity of $5,000, then your maximum position should be only $500. Now, how did I come up with that $500 number, you might ask? To give you a scenario, let's say that you have either a cash account or maybe even more than one broker so you can trade on it every day. Your total trading capital is only $500. You'll take that $500 and divide it by two so you have money to trade with every day. Now, when you divide that $5,000 by two, that leaves you with a total of $2,500 of trading capital per day. One common mistake of newer traders is they use all their money on one trade and not having enough money left over for opportunities when they are available. So take that $2,500 that you now have available on the day to trade with and you divide that by five. That will give you five trades to make the same amount as the original $2,500 with less risk per trade. Every $1,000 that you add to the account will only allow an increase of $100 per trade and only if you're trading without errors. Using a larger position than what you're mentally conditioned for can cause a multitude of different trading errors. If the trade starts to go against you, it may cause you to mentally freeze and not cut your losses where you've predefined your risk, turning this small loss into an even bigger loss. If there's just a little blip on the chart, you can become emotional and not be able to think clearly. You may even not take a profit because you want more than what the pattern is able to offer. This could turn a winning trade into a loser or even worse, a catastrophic loss. Businesses always have money management in place and systems to prevent them from losing more money than what they anticipated. This is one of the reasons why you should always use a hard stop. This is your business's way of preventing unnecessary losses that could be avoided. Successful businesses always know what their target market is. What markets are you going to be trading? You could be comfortable trading OTC markets but not listed stocks, or you're good at swing trading and not day trading. When you look at your data, you may find that what makes you most of your money is in one market or price range over another. This could include listed versus OTCs, Forex, and even crypto. Part of money management is reducing your exposure to risk that includes not trading the markets you're not comfortable or in chop that chops you out. This helps narrow your focus on the best trading opportunities for you and reduces unwanted losses. Trading timeframes are so important and oftentimes overlooked. All patterns or signals have an average time where they form and have a higher probability of working. A morning panic dip buy has a higher statistical probability of working in the morning than a panic that happens in the afternoon or midday. Understanding your edge or signal and what time frames they have a higher chance of working and not buying or taking short positions too soon or too late. Are you looking for a quick scalp or a few days or a week swing trade? Everyone is different and this should be incorporated into your trading business plan. The importance of backtesting or data collection is if you want to become a consistent trader, you need to take the time to make sure your patterns work. There are many ways to backtest a strategy, and you can use the systems that use historical data, or you can use what I call live data from the markets on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I do think that live data collection is more effective for developing a strategy because it gives you current market conditions that will change with the ever-changing markets. Excel or Google Sheets are great for backtesting and data gathering. It may take some time to learn the formulas in Excel or Google Sheets, but once you get them, you can copy and paste them to wherever you need it. Google Sheets is fully customizable. The time it takes to track and gather your data does take a little time every day. You can make it as simple or as complex as you want, as long as you understand that data that you're collecting. This is one of the biggest mistakes that new traders make in having a daily trading plan backed by data reinforces your beliefs in your own system. It helps you avoid emotional decisions because you have the concrete rules that you already know work. This helps you stay on track and avoid random trading and confusion because it tells you what you should be trading and what you should be avoiding. Part of trading as a business is having a periodic reviews of your trading. Trading in sample sets of 20 to 25 trades and reviewing your results after each sample set helps identify what's truly going on with your trading. I know this might sound strange, but a lot of traders that have developed a working trading system or strategy for some reason don't always follow that trading system. 
By reviewing your sample sets of trades, you are able to identify if you are following your trading system or and your core business rules. During your periodic review, if there is any adjustments necessary, you can choose to do so. You can choose to change your profit targets or even your risk, but only if your data says that you should. You never want to change a single thing during a trading sample set. It is very common for traders as they are learning new patterns or setups to start to begin to randomly trade other patterns or even old setups. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please uh, slap that uh, like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave a comment below. Do you have a trading business plan? And after watching this video, are you going to be creating one? I'd love to hear from you and we'll see you next time.